Hello folks, uh, I'm going to do a quick comparison uh, between two cameras that most people now would consider either obsolete or um, just simply um, unusable to some people uh, because of their shortcomings. Um, they're two older uh, professional Nikon DSLRs, um, this being the older of the two, the Nikon D1X and this one being uh, the slightly newer uh, Nikon D2H. Um, I'm just going to quick go through some of the differences between these cameras um, and uh, tell you what that I what I like about them and some things that I don't like about them. Um, we'll start off with the older one. Uh, this is the Nikon D1X. Um, this was a uh, the first uh, DSLR that um, was successful, the Nikon D1 series. Um, now that camera had a 2.7 megapixel uh, CCD sensor. Um, this camera um, was the latest version of the D1 series and this is the D1X. This actually has a uh, 5.1 uh, or 5.3 megapixel sensor, something like that. Um, there are claims that uh, the um, sensor could be uh, interpolated to be uh, 10 megapixels, although I've, I've really never bought into that, um, and in any case it wouldn't be a true 10 megapixel image. Um, but to my eyes, this, um, uh, this camera uh, with its sensor um, takes more than adequate uh, pictures. Um, yeah, five megapixels isn't exactly a ton, but um, for most people, um, and especially if you're just going to be posting to the internet, um, it's more than enough. Um, if you want to see uh, pictures um, taken with either one of these cameras, um, check out my Flickr account, which I'll have a link to um, below in the comments. Um, but continuing with the D1X, now this is a an older camera. Uh, this came out, I believe, in 2001, um, and it's pretty much the same as uh, most of the other D1 series cameras. Um, I really like the button layout. It's very similar to the Nikon F100 film camera. Um, of course, with the only difference is being this one has, obviously, an LCD um, screen on the back, um, which I'll talk about first. Um, the D1X um, and the D1 series in general just did not have a very good LCD screen. As you can see, I'll turn it on here. Now, when you turn the camera on, the LCD screen doesn't come on, um, and there's you'll see no uh, there's no playback or anything like that. Um, you actually have to turn the monitor on, and even then, nothing will come up. Uh, but let's see here. If you go down into menu, uh, that is, that's the menu option. Uh, let's see if you can see that. There we go. Um, and as you can see, pretty standard old uh, digital camera menu system. Um, and here I was just taking some my taking some test shots. Um, you have to look at the the LCD pretty much straight on, otherwise you're not going to get a very accurate reading and even then everything is going to be uh, pretty much uh, all the colors and whatnot are going to be off. Um, however, uh, coming from someone being myself who shoots a lot of film or at least used to, uh, you know, being able to see that you've actually taken a, you know, decently exposed image um, is handy. So I like that feature. Um, all the white balance menu function buttons are all down here behind this little uh, metal flap, which is kind of odd. Um, your ISO uh, settings and everything are down here. Um, you have a command wheel uh, right here. And the, uh, the memory card um, reader, of course, is under here. Now it's a little different. You have to uh, you have to lift this tab up and then push it in to eject the card. Um, and then that's another thing I'll talk about. Um, this has a, a 2 gigabyte uh, memory card, which was the largest card that this camera would support. Um, if you put anything larger than that in there, it just won't read it. It's too much space. Um, 
you, you kind of have to remember when these cameras came out that a uh, 2 gigabyte memory card was pretty much unheard of. Uh, most people had either a 1 gigabyte or a uh, uh, 256 or uh, there was a 500 megabyte version 2. Um, and I'll start, I might as well start doing some comparisons right now uh, between the two. Um, that is where the D2H makes a huge um, leap into uh, more being a more modern camera. Uh, you can fit a, uh, again, you, you don't have to lift a tab up or anything. You can just push that like we're more used to, although CF cards are becoming uh, not quite as common anymore. Uh, this has just an 8 gigabyte uh, card in it now, a SanDisk, which I actually haven't been super happy with. The last, last couple of SanDisk cards I've had, um, they, they haven't lost any information, but I've had trouble uh, with my computer reading them. Uh, whereas I've had Lexar cards and then even a cheap Transcend card in this, and I've had no issues whatsoever um, with those. Um, the first difference you'll see at the back, I should also add that the D2H, you can put pretty much any, uh, any size card uh, in the D2H, and it will, it will read it. Um, but you can see on the back, obviously, the D2H has a much larger uh, screen, um, I think I formatted this card, so I don't think there's going to be any images on here to look at. Oh, nope, there is. Um, it's a lot, obviously, it's quite a bit bigger than the, uh, the, uh, D1X screen. As you can see there, um, it's still not super accurate on the D2H, um, but it's got a lot better viewing angle on it. Um... Um, it's still not the most accurate though, so if it doesn't quite look uh, right on the LCD screen, uh, you still may have exposed it correctly. And both of these cameras have a uh, histogram on the back, uh, which you can check as well. Um, the D2H, I prefer the, uh, the layout of the, of the buttons a little bit more. Um, I like how, you know, your, your auto uh, exposure lock button is right here and this is offset a little bit so um, it's really easy to remember which one's which um, all the menu buttons are a lot quicker uh, a lot easier to set there's no flap or anything down here the buttons are just on the outside um, uh, let's see here the other thing is um, the the uh, vertical trigger um, this was something I didn't realize um, on the D1X, it has um, your shutter um, right there, but it doesn't have anything on the front. See that? Um, whereas the D2H, of course, has both. Um, it has the wheel on the front and uh, on the back. So, um, and in case if you're wondering, this does have an L bracket on it, um, which is why it looks a little, a uh, little bigger and bulkier. Um, one thing that I do like more on the D2H is the selector between the uh, manual focus, um, continuous autofocus, and uh, single autofocus. Um, I like the D2H. It's it's uh, a switch. That's a lot easier to, to move if you're holding the camera, whereas the D1X, it's right on the front, and I just don't find it as quick to change. Um, I use a lot of manual focus lenses, such as uh, these old AI, AIS lenses, um, which will bring me to the next point, if you do use um, manual focus lenses or if you use um, or if you use manual focus a lot on your autofocus lenses um, both of these cameras have the uh, they actually have very good uh, viewfinders uh, for being a these are both I should have mentioned this earlier these are both crop censored cameras which means they have a one and a half crop factor um, so they're not a full-frame camera. 
which to me isn't as big of a deal um, to me you know especially when you're using these older lenses um, you're really using the best part of the lens because most lenses tend to be softer on the edges especially when you're wide open and these sensors just use the best part which uh, which I like um, now back to the manual focusing now these both have the uh, arrows in the viewfinder which tell you which way to move the focusing ring and then they also add the confirmation dot when it you have um, when your AF point in the viewfinder is on uh, your subject and it's achieved uh, focus. The difference is the Nikon D2H has a little bit better magnification, and the focusing arrows and confirmation dot are quite a bit bigger. So I would say if you're going to use a lot of manual focus lenses. Um, the D2H would probably be a, maybe a little bit better uh, option. Uh, manual focusing on these cameras is fairly easy. Uh, it's um, it's obviously not as easy as having focus speaking on a mirrorless camera, but it is uh, it is still nice to have. So that those are the main differences between these two cameras. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about are the sensors. Now, even though the D1X is actually the older camera, it actually has uh, more. It actually has more megapixels. Um, it has uh, the D2H has 4.1, and the D1X has 5.3. Now, that's not really that big of a difference. Uh, both these cameras have odd. They both have odd color. Uh, they definitely, it's definitely best to shoot both these cameras in uh, RAW, I would say. Newer cameras, it's not a big deal if you shoot them in JPEG. Most of the time, uh, they look really good, um, and that way you're not wasting a bunch of uh, memory space. But these cameras, obviously, with their low megapixel counts, even shooting RAW, uh, they just do not take up that much space, even with the RAW file. I think the D1X RAW file is... I want to say around 8 uh, megabytes, and the D2H is actually, uh, I think it's only about 4 or 5, so it's really nice uh, for storage purposes. Um, and between the two, I don't notice a huge image quality difference. They have two different type of, types of sensors. Uh, the D1X has a... Uh, uh, CCD sensor and the D2H has a, uh, I think it's called a JFET or something like that, uh, sensor. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen another one really used uh, since then. Uh, most sensors now, of course, are CMOS. And I pref personally prefer the images from the D1X, despite this being an older camera. I actually prefer the images from it. Um, it has a certain color rendition, even though it's not super accurate. It's really good for uh, skin tones. Uh, the D2H is a little bit flatter image, and it's just not personal preference. It's just not my favorite. Um, but again, you can uh, take a look at the images, and if you know, if, of course, if you shoot raw, you can pretty much get um, any look you want out of the cameras. Um, now, as far as um, as far as size and weight, they're both very similar. Um, I think the D1X actually weighs a little bit more. Um, of course, this has the has a uh, L bracket on it, so it's it's probably a little heavier now. Um, but I've I chose I took the L bracket off, and I just prefer to keep it on there um, since I have used it a few times now. It came with the camera. Um, if you're wondering what the uh, white dot is on top of the viewfinder, um, or the pentaprism, excuse me. Um, it's it's actually for the white balance. It's for the um, camera's meter, um, and that supposedly supposedly gives you a little bit better uh, white balance um, if you're going to shoot in auto. Um, which on both these cameras, I have found um, pretty good, although they're certainly not as good as today's cameras. Uh, but again, if you shoot in RAW, that is not uh, as big a concern. Um, let's see, moving on. I think the one other big difference between these cameras, and this isn't really a big difference, 
um, is the um, use of manual focus lenses, which, like I said, I do, uh, I use quite a bit. Um, the D2H, you can program the focal length and aperture, maximum aperture in, and you get full matrix metering. Um, now, that's a pretty nice um, option, although I have found on the D1X what I can do is there's a center-weighted metering option where you can just make the center-weighted circle larger, um, and I have found that gives not the same results, but very similar. And also the D2H, as far as I've been able to figure out, you can only set it one at a time for each lens. So each time you swap a lens, you have to reprogram it. Now it doesn't take super long, but it's kind of annoying, and to me personally, it's not worth it. Um, the D1X, of course, if you put it in, if you put an AI or AIS lens on it, it will revert, even if you keep... Uh, keep it in matrix metering it will revert to center weighted and you can of course do spot metering if you change it to that um, which I find that if you use uh, your spot meter or your matrix meter that it uh, works just as well um, or I shouldn't say just as well but it uh, it, it gives you a little bit more accurate uh, exposure that you are looking for so um, the last thing I will say is these cameras have uh, a couple different uh, frame rates. Uh, the D2H will do eight frames a second, um, which I'm not gonna show that to you. There's plenty of videos out there. Um, that's obviously pretty fast, even by today's standards. The D1X only does three frames a second. So the D1X is certainly the, uh, would be more the precision if you want a little bit more resolution. Whereas the D2H, I would still say for fast shooting sports, whatnot, um, considering that the file sizes are so small, is still pretty relevant today. Um, and I would say the same for the D1X in terms of, you know, general image quality. Uh, if you want to head over to my Flickr account, which I'll put a post in, or a link in, um, you'll be able to see, you know, this camera takes, both of these cameras take really excellent photos. I know they're, um, certainly not new, they're certainly outdated, but I would not consider them obsolete. They're still... Um, very usable, even uh, now that they're, you know, 13, 14 years old. Uh, so um, I think that is it. Um, I may make another video on these two cameras. Um, if you have any questions, please, please put them in the comments, and I will be happy to answer them. Thank you.